Shalom. 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 First and foremost, we're going to face the East and give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Kapidash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, and his son's name with the word entered the call of Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Also give her praises, honor, and glory unto the Hapa Kapadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say shalom to all you sincere hearted Aki and Wakwa, that your brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to our apostle and the great millstone who tells us truth and rule well. All right, as it be, as a great millstone Dallas branch, all right, we come out here week in and week out, all right, to prophesy and proclaim the words of Yahweh by Shema was shot. All right, Yahweh, that's the true name of the Heavenly Father who the world only calls God. All right, or Yahweh, or uh, uh, Yahuwah, or uh, Yahweh. That's not his true name. All right, and we also do so in the real name of his son, Yahweh Shah. All right, Baha Shem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shah. All right, which means Yah is he. Yahweh Shah means to the, uh, he saves or he delivers. All right, and that's who the Heavenly Father has set up and ordained to deliver his people, which his people is the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites that you see on this sign right here pursuant to Ezekiel the 37th chapter. All right, how this is that, this is that one stick that's joining Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, all right, the so-called blacks, all right, along with the Latino and uh, uh, Native and Seminole tribes, man. All right, because for a long time, for a thousand years, we've been split apart and separated ever since uh, the times of King Solomon. But nonetheless, we're going to hop into it, man. All right, going into some prophecy. All right, things are getting juicy out here in the world. All throughout the four corners of the earth, the Lord is starting to work. Can we grab, um, I'll get it, uh, Psalms 119 and 126. Yep. Because we come out here ultimately, all right, to sigh and cry for all the abominations, pursuant to the book of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter and the fourth verse. So perhaps Yahweh Bashamah Shah may have mercy upon us whenever he starts to bring out, right, these heavy uh, uh, judgments upon this world, man. All right, because everybody else is totally complacent with the wickedness, right, and perverseness that's in this world, man. All right, nobody is uh, uttering a, 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 a word, man. Right here, you got Esau, Edom, all right, got after school Satan programs. All right, all these little children is missing. There ain't nobody bad in the eye, man. All right, you got the so-called black spank and Native Americans and the degenerate clone Tyrone uh, estate. All right, that's perpetuated by Esau, Edom, but ain't nobody signing and crying out about it, man. All right, accept the men of the Lord. You got it up. This is uh, Psalms 119 and verse 26. All right, it reads, I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of, of thy precepts. Yep. So, thy, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Is that 126? Oh, you said Psalms 119. Yeah, 119, 126. 126. Oh, 126. That's a good one, though. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we yeah. out here to proclaim the wonderful uh, decrees of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, which he said what? And pursuant to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, I will set up the apostles last, man. And that's what the Lord is doing. Starting with our apostles, our leaders, a great millstone, all right? Our, uh, our beloved apostles, man, the Heavenly Father has set them up, all right? Uh, put his unction, put his spirit upon them to teach us, right? And now the Lord, the Heavenly Father, through his son Yahweh Shah, has set us up. All right, as apostles, because that word apostle or title apostle just simply means to be sent forth. All right, to, to, uh, to be sent. All right, and what are we sent forth for? We're sent forth to be ambassadors and heralders of the kingdom of heaven on the behalf of Yahweh Bashmael Shah with a particular message, man. And that's that new song that only the elect can sing pursuant to Revelation 14. And to highlight the error of these people's ways, to highlight that you're walking in a perverse manner, which is going to lead you to destruction. All right. This is uh, Psalms 119 and 126. Uh, brother. This is uh, Psalms 119 and 126. It said, it is time for thee, Lord, to work. Yeah, it is time for thee, O Lord, to work. Hence the word time, because the Lord does everything in a dispensation of time, measurement, weight, number, as he says in the book of wisdom, Psalm 11 chapter. Because for a long time, the Lord, he didn't do anything with the so-called white man. He wasn't judging the so-called white man, which biblical nationality are the Edomites, man. All right? You consider all the rape, rob, and murder, and ill dealings and atrocities that this damn devil has done. I'm going to hold up this sign real quick. When you consider all the ill dealings that these people right here on the sign that you see, all right, the, uh, the so-called wicked elite, all right? Well, for a long time, the Heavenly Father through his son wasn't executing judgment upon these people, man. 
All right, but now we're in those times to where the heavenly father about to send his son to judge the head of the heathen. And who's the head of the heathen? All right, you Edomites, starting with the Duke of Amalek, which are the small and the little caps, like the beloved brother of uh, Benaya said, the, the little caps, right? The, the little hat people, man. The ones that's over there in, in our land, and our holy land is claiming to be the true people. All right, well, Yahweh Shah is about to do a major work upon you down rats, man, you gutter rats. All right, he's giving us all different types of omens and signs, such as what we just saw a few days ago, right, with the Persians, all right, stirring themselves up to uh, to shoot those rockets over there on you, man. All right? Oh, yeah, those drones and, yeah, and rockets, man. You see? You got it up. Psalms, one, Psalms 119 and 126 again. It says, it is time for thee, Lord, to work. Yeah, and well, you go into that Hebrew word, work. I can't remember the exact word, but it means to judge. All right? The Heavenly Father, he's about to send his son to judge this place. Yes, and it will be his son who the world is going to call Jesus. Okay? His real name is Yahweh Shah because what did Yahweh Shah say in John the fifth chapter? For the Father, the Father judgeth no man, but have committed all judgment to the Son. All right? So the, so the, who the world, right, thinks uh, uh, his name is Jesus. He's, he's a passive, all right, power. All right, he's a so-called white man with blonde, stringy hair. All right, he, he, he's very uh, meek and quiet. No, man. All right, that's contrary to what scriptures uh, depicts him as. He's a, he's a so-called uh, he's a so-called angry black man. All right, pursuant to Revelation the first chapter, he's coming back. All right, to uh, um, with that sword, man, against his enemies to judge his place. You got it out. Well, they have made void thy law, and in this time, man, all the ways of Yahweh Shem Yahweh in this society have been made out to be wicked. The things that are that are righteously set in place. The natural ordinances of things, you know, the, the family structure, okay, the, the, the food that we consume, you know, the, the respect that's supposed to be shown to people that are over you and, and your parents. All these things have been looked down upon and painted in a bad light. So evil is uplifted, okay? Wicked behavior is uplifted in this society, man. And righteousness is along. And righteousness is looked at as, oh, this person is. He, he's contrary. He's, he, he's, he's the bad guy. Right. Sure, they're turning the things upside down, like the scriptures say. Right, right. And that's what's about to be eradicated off the face of this earth, man. And that's why great judgment is necessary, man. All right, because this place is this place is on self-destruct mode. It's beyond, all right, uh, um, it's beyond repairing it, right, from a carnal perspective. It's going to need reparations, right, from, from, from the heavens. All right, starting with repairing and restoring the most highest people, man which is the so-called Black Hispanic Native Americans, but it all starts with this word, all right? It all starts with the breath of life coming back into the, into the elect. Yeah. yeah, man, like you mentioned, this place has reached a point of no return, so to speak. Just kind of put it in a nutshell. And the importance, people will come and ask, why does it matter who the people were? Why does it matter? Don't that sound up, brother? Why does it matter what the Lord looked like? Well, it all matters. For the one, the healing of these people right here, right. and need the elect of these people being healed on the sign leads to the world being refreshed, leads to everything being put in, in, in its right place. So people might look at it as a small and minute thing, right? What the people look like, what the Lord looks like, but these are the gateway, you know, topics that lead the elect to ask more questions, to seek seek out of the book they read, mm -hmm. which is going to lead to the refreshing of the earth. But I'm going to grab this since you mentioned that. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 24. It says, But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. That's right. I mean, we're going to read it again. It says, The multitude of the wise. Now, what's the root of wisdom? All right, the fear of the Lord. So when there's a lot of people that fear the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shah, it says, What is the welfare? And that word welfare means health. All right, it's the health and the welfare of the world, man. All right, and the Lord has allowed us to see the uh, the side effects, right, of the serpent ruling. The Lord has allowed us to see the side effects of uh, uh, of this wine, right, that that uh, that Babylon the Great, right, has uh, has pretty much chugged down the people's throats, man. All right, not only has the people uh, partaken of it, but now we're in a time to where those that have the eyes south to see can actually see the side effects and the effects. All right, that this damn devil has done through his damn philosophies, all right, his pseudosciences, why his witchcrafts, his uh, uh his, his religions, all right, his pseudo knowledge, all right. So, and what is it? What does it all produce upon the earth? Death, all right. 
So now the Lord is reversing that by doing what? Well, first and foremost, it started with him sending his, his son, Yahweh Shah, all right, to disannul death, to disarm death. Let's grab that real quick, Baba Kashan, Colossians 2, and I want to say uh, 12. If we could get an NOT, Baba Kashan. Yep. All right, because the Heavenly Father has resurrected, all right, these dry bones, man. All right, the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, first and foremost, all right, by giving us this word, man. All right, so this is proof that Yahweh Shah is alive and well. All right, we're not serving no, no, no dead, no dead God, man, like all these other niggas are. Right, all you niggas that's stuck in chemitology, all right, and Christianity, worshiping Jesus, those are no gods at all, man. All right, whose names should never be even spoken of. All right, why? Because they don't even exist. They're figment of your fucking imagination. How about that? All right, those are man-made inventions. You see, man-made Jesus. All right. So man made uh, uh, all these thousands of gods right within uh, uh, the uh, the Egypt uh, or Egyptology, man. You see, but Yahweh Bashmah Shah created the heavens and the earth and everything in the heavens and on the earth and in the sea below. All right, and now he's showing us right that he's alive and well by by working signs and wonders, right? Not just in the world but amongst his people, starting with the elect. Right, this is a sign and a wonder, pursuant to the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Right, the Lord said he's going to set. Right in the in the midst of the borders and pillars of Egypt, right, uh, uh, the, the children of Israel as a sign and a wonder, as a little altar, as a little sanctuary, roughly paraphrasing. All right, and we're crying out for for the Lord to send that great Savior. All right, so this is a sign and a wonder. You consider our apostles, elders, and their teachers. All right, for 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 forty plus years going out to the highways and byways like clockwork, man. All right, and, and being consistent on it. All right, because that's that's a that's a mark of a tale. Over telltale, that's a telltale sign of a true prophet is their, is their diligence and, and consistency by bringing out the right doctrine. Well, that's a sign and a wonder, man. And people don't really consider what's really happening, man. All right, how you have so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, all right, they treat each other, all right, with brotherly love, just like Yahweh Shah said, all right, uh, John the 13th chapter, the world shall know that you're my disciples because of the love that you have for one another. And the, and the doctrine is going out, man. So this is a sign, this is very well indeed a sign and a wonder that's happening in, uh, in the world, man. And this is why the Heavenly Father is about to send his son to totally run through this goddamn place, man. All right, because the cloak has been stripped and removed off you people. You people, y'all know who the Israelites are. Y'all know who the, uh, what the true names of the Heavenly Father and his son is. All right, y'all know what Babylon the Great is. You, so you can keep playing dumb as long as you want to uh, play dumb, man. Because that's, that's one thing about a nigga. A nigga loves to act like he don't know what the hell going on. All right, but that ain't gonna pass with your by Shmuel shot because he knows that you know. What's that Proverbs 24? Hold that, but you got it, bro. Can I put it through this for you? This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 11, just landbagging off the priest point because you know he was going into how this is a sign and a wonder the fact of coming back to this understanding of these scriptures, man. Deuteronomy even speaks about that in Deuteronomy 28, man. So this is a sign that our power, Yahweh was shy, is there for a living power, man. So this is Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. It says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of Yahweh was shy into the tomb. Now, the so like that, who's that them? That them are those two witnesses that you read about early in this chapter. Northern kingdom and southern kingdom. Just like the heavenly father commissioned Moses and Aaron, right, in ancient Egypt, all right, to pretty much go prophesy, right, and proclaim and to proclaim unto uh, Pharaoh, let my people go, so they can go uh, do sacrifice unto me. Well, the Lord has set up His two witnesses once again, except this time it's consisted of the whole nation of Israel, all right, uh, of the prophets, the 144,000 ordained prophets of both Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. So that's that breath of life entering to those men okay go ahead out right, just add a quick point that, that this this proves that malachi 4 in, in, in the end of the verse that uh, elijah the prophet has been sent because he said he'll send elijah the prophet before the great dreadful day of the lord to turn our hearts of the son back to the father that's how we rose that after those three days man to do uh, uh rob our business man this is from the top revelation 11 11 from the top and after three days and a half the spirit of life from yahweh bahashima was shy into the tithum and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and you see that being happening now why you think esau are doing the things that he's doing now jump started things he got started distractions going on in the world because the prophets has risen up and second thessalonians being revealed man the, uh destroying esau by the brightness of his coming yeah why was he afraid though because this man has literally spent his whole yeah. rulership all right uh predicating off of our downfall keeping us on this degenerate low vibration keeping us tyrones man 
Yep. And as we stated earlier in this uh, lesson, right when we open up the uh, the camp, man. Yep. All right, that's what they. That's why they plastered that movie all in front of your face, man. Cause like Apostle Elder Apostle Ricard says, that movie it wasn't a movie; it was a documentary. Okay, and that's exactly what that fucking movie was. It was a documentary, and it was really Esau in his pride publishing that movie. All right, because he's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing to you. I'm I'm gonna put it in a movie. Look, these people bugged out, man. Esau, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in a movie, all right? And I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it a uh, comedy, all right? And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to you. I'm gonna show you the systematic breakdown I'm doing unto you, all right? And there's nothing you can do about it though. But what Esau has not taken into account is the elect, man. All right? But that's something that he um he's forced to uh he, that he's forced to come to grips with now is the elect. And that's what the brother was just breaking down right there. That spirit of life entering top into inside the bones of the elect, man, standing up on their feet. So this is why the uh, the wicked elite rulers, they're uh, they're they're, uh, they're uh, yeah they're bugging out and they're afraid, like yeah. the brother just broke down. Yeah, no. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse six it says, "At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall shall he that is worthy of death be put to death." Right. But at the mouth of one witness shall not uh, shall he not be put to death. But the point is, I'll read it again, Deuteronomy 17, 17 and 6. It says, At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall that shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. Man. Right. And the Lord has, as we just read or quoted in Revelation 11 chapter, the Lord has set up his two witnesses, northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And Yahweh Bashamal shout, well, guess what? Well, we have a witness, all right, that's greater, man. Hey, uh, the heavenly father through his son. So that's three witnesses right there, <laughs> all right. So, so it's uh it's evident, all right, that uh that you damn Edomites are going down and you know it, all right. No matter how much you try to categorize us, all right, accuse your brethren, pursuant to uh, Revelation 12 and 11, all right, how the accuser of our brethren, right, is uh is fallen, all right. You go into that word accuser, it goes into categorio, and that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to put a stigma. He's trying, he's trying to put the prophets. But really, the, the whole nation of Israel, but especially the prophets in a category, but it's not going to work. All right. Why? Because the Lord has already sanctified a, a divine counsel, a divine testimony against you, man. All right. Because the testimony that we're speaking is it, true. Right. It's faithful and true. All right. And just look at your fruits. Look at look at look at what you're doing in the earth. What are we saying that's wrong? <laughs> like, for real, what are we saying that's wrong? Starting with our pastor elders and the men on down. What are we saying that's wrong that you Edomites are not doing? All right, are you not guilty of rape, robbing, and murdering every goddamn body up on the face of the earth? All right, I'll just leave you, I'll, I'll, I'll pose this one question to you. Just name anybody, if you want to be out, name one good thing that the so-called white man has done for humanity. Shalom. Name one good thing that the so-called white man has done for humanity. You see? And you, and you, be, you be scratching your head all day trying to figure that shit out, man. All right, so, so the testimony that we possess and we're proclaiming and prophesying against you damn devils is, is very well indeed true and factual, man. Why? Because you're the man of sin, right, that scripture speaks about in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, yep. which you're only going to continue until the Lord takes you out the way. Right. All right? Eat because you damn Edomites, y'all ain't doing shit, man. Let's be real. As much as you boast and you talk, all right, you, I'm going to shoot three rockets to the moon, all right? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to open up CERN. All right, I'm, I'm gonna put this juice inside. Esau, you ain't doing a goddamn thing, man. All right, you're being ran and operated by your how about Shemal Shah. Everybody is a tool of the Heavenly Father. Everybody's a minister. Because that word minister means servant. All right, now he has his servants on his right hand and he has his servants on his left hand. All right, in Abba Rajazal, we be found faithful, all right, and worthy enough to, to be his servants on the right hand side. All right, but other than that, everybody else is his servants on the left hand side to fulfill the necessary evils to fulfill the offenses, as Yahweh Shah said. Woe be unto the world because of offenses. Offenses must come. You got it, bro. Hey, uh, real quick. This, uh, this Psalms 37 and 33 uh, in the NLT, it says, but the Lord will not let the wicked succeed or let the godly be condemned when they are put on trial. You see, because the brother had mentioned about those two or three witnesses, man, like we read in Deuteronomy 17, you know what I'm saying? Being us, like when you read in Revelation 11, going to the northern and southern kingdom, like I said, that third witness, even Esau's own tongue, man. You got these truthers coming out. You see, Esau, like the scripture said in the book of Psalms, his own tongue shall uh, uh, fall upon himself, man. What we paraphrasing, man. 
You see, so you have these di different truthers like Dabu Seven, these other, you know what I'm saying, these other, uh, 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 like I said, alternative, yeah, media like the water, bro. You know what I'm saying, bringing out these, their own, the, 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 the Edomites' own people, bringing out the weakness of their own nation, man. You see, and now, that's why, like the brother read in the Revelation 11, that's why Esau was scared, man. Now this testimony, like the brother said, we have, all right, it's being brought forth before the Heavenly Father, man, you see? And uh, Esau's gonna try to, and right now, Esau's gonna try to slander the prophets, man. But the apostle Paul just did a lesson about, about GMS being on that hated, the, the most, uh, uh, the most hate, the hated list, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, being like saying we the most hateful, we up there with the KKK and all these other people, you know what I'm saying? Well, just like we read in Psalm 37, the Lord is not gonna let the uh, wicked succeed or let the godly be condemned when they are brought up on trial, man. You see, because you can't you can't lay any charge unto the elect, man. Like it says in Revelation, uh, what is it, 14? It says there is no guile in their mouth. You see, you can't see the elect. The elect is, they guiltless. They blameless before the Heavenly Father, man. Yeah. So it ain't, this slander campaign that Esau's gonna try to come with, it's not gonna work, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad you mentioned that, I, about, um, hey, Shalom. Yeah, about some stuff. Hey, Shalom, bro. I'm glad you mentioned that about um, how that how that uh, list came out, right? A Southern Southern Poverty Law Center, right? About how Great Millstone is um, is uh, number six, right? For the most hated, all right, uh, or the or, or, or uh, the uh, number six hate group in America. Yeah, above all the other camps. So, but that's good, all right? Because why why do I say that's good? Well, why does the Bible say that's good? Because that's a sign, all right, that you are, are uh, very well indeed, right, a follower of Yahweh Shah. Why? Because the world hated Yahweh Shah, man. Yep. John 7 and 7. Can we get that real quick? I got, I got it. Okay, let's get uh, John 7 real quick. And then John 7 and 7. This is John chapter... John chapter 7, verse 7 verse 7. 7. 7, the world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Right, can you read again? Mm -hmm. It says, the world cannot hate you. Yeah, Yahweh Shah said, the world cannot hate you. Go ahead. But me it hated. But me it hated. <laughs> now, he said this over 2,000 years ago, right? And what does it say in Revelation 11, chapter the 8th verse? All right, we're all in the spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Now, was Yahweh Shai here in the flesh crucified here in spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt, a.k.a. America? No. All right. So how did they crucify him? All right, by, by Xing out his ways, Xing out his true image, by his true nature, his true character. All right. So that, that perpetual hate, all right, that the world has for Yahweh Shai is still played out today. All right, now it's being played out ultimately through his men. Go ahead, up. Huh? It says, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Because I testify that the works therein are evil. So, but what did he do for his disciples? He, he, he gave his disciples that same testimony that he possessed. Everything that Yahweh Shah was preaching, we're preaching today. <laughs> so what does that mean? That the world's going to hate, it, it hates us. Well, ultimately it hates Yahweh Shah in us, man. Yeah. All right, because these people... All right, we're dealing with spirits out here. Ephesians 6 chapter, all right? Uh, 2 Corinthians the 10th chapter, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, uh, spirits, man. Against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? And these spirits, these, these wicked demons, these, these demons upon these people, they can detect, all right, the spirit of Yahweh Shah, all right, upon his men, all right? So, especially when you prophesy and tell the world, all right, that they're on some bullshit, man. That there is, there is no such thing as more than two genders. That right there will have everybody in the down pulling at their hair nowadays, telling them that you know, there's only two two genders. <laughs> you see, telling them that uh, uh, that that women, all right, are supposed to be keepers at home. Uh, you tell me I can't be outside. You see, ultimately prophesying against the image of the beast and the MOTB. All right, everything that the so-called white man, all right, pushes out in society, man. That's what we're prophesying and testifying against. All right, so let's grab, uh, for, oh, well, you got something, right? Mm -hmm. You got it, bro. Matthew 5 and 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all men are evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Yep, you got it, bro. Yeah, like the priest is going into, man. You know, uh, uh, 
they're speaking evil of us, calling us, you know, uh, pretty much putting a, uh, accusing us, you know, putting a false, uh, you know, false accusation against us, man. You Can know? you grab that in Psalms 50 and 20? Mm -hmm. the shot. We started like uh, 19, you know? Psalms chapter 50, verse 19, Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Uh -huh. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Now, skip up to uh, verse, uh, let's see, uh, let's see. Oh, that's good. Yeah, okay. 19 is good. Okay. Yeah. And thy tongue frameth deceit. Yeah. Now, givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Now, who is that? He saw Edom, man. All right? With his hurtful words. All right? Through his laws and legislations and through, right, him putting, uh, putting his brother Jacob in a category as him being that accuser of the... Let's hold that too. Uh, Revelation 12, Bible the shot. 12 and 10. Yes. That's him uh, putting his brother Jacob into a category. All right, by calling us uh, uh, a domestic terrorist group. Okay. Which, what, like, what type of major crime have, have, have the Israelites done upon the soils of America compared to you damn, uh, 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 what do you call it, secular Christians? All right, you consider how the so called white man, all right, gained this land. All right, by, where's that uh, image of white Jesus? You see, and all this was done in the name of Christianity, rape, robbing, murdering, right, and colonizing, all right, the whole world, right, especially over here in America, right, against the, um, against the Latino, against the Latino tribes and the Native Americans, man, all right, if they refuse to bow down to this image right here, well, they'll get, they'll get put to death, man, you see, and that was done in the name of Christianity, have the, have the Hebrew Israelites done anything like that, no, but see, but that's him giving his mouth to evil, man. All right, frame, frame, uh, putting us, uh, framing us. What's that, Psalms 94? Would you grab that too? You know? Can you get that? Real quick. Psalms 94, yeah. It's all good. He can get it, bro. You got Psalms 94? I'm going to get it. I want to get it. This is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse uh, 20. It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? That's right. And who's the throne of iniquity? The man of sin, Esau, Edom. You see? So scripture is posing a question, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? You see, because even when you go into uh, the founding fathers, so-called of America, they were known as who? The framers, right? The ones that pretty much uh, set up the constitution, all right, the Bill of Rights, they were known as the framers. And they pretty much set this system up, they framed it. Because it's the house of Edom, right? So when you consider a house, well, you have the framers. You have the men that laid the two by fours, the foundation, of, you know, the, the, the framework of the building, all right? To pretty much lay out the structural design, all right, for that house. Well, how is the structural design of America set up, right? It was set up and established by wickedness and by lies. Joel, the 13th chapter, for you are all forges of lies, man. All right, and how did he forge those lives? Through the framers, through the ones, right, that, that wrote these laws, these prescribed decrees. I like you holding something, huh? You got something? Yeah, I'm reading, um, so I remember, the, I remember the SPLC had a list of, uh, you know, all the camps, not just like, you know, the actual Israelite camps, but like the cities that they're in. This is like back in 2019 and then, or 2018 maybe it was. And then in 2019, they had like, basically yeah, with some information that came out um yeah, you know what i'm saying um because basically there there was there was like a scandal that, that went on within the splc okay. so they're basically trying to act like they're you know this righteous whistleblowers which they originated you know basically targeting the kkk you know what i'm saying and basically now the so-called negro latino and native american is now the, the face of, of hate in America, which we've received the most hate. Right, right. So I was just looking up that history, like, you know, of the SPLC, because it was in 2019, but I was going over the details before I brought it out. God, God. Yeah, man. So basically, Esau just wants us to continue to get our ass beat and just shut the hell up about it. You see? And two thirds of our people, they're totally fine with that. They're still stand upon him that smoked him. All right, but the elect is saying something about it. All right, as now we're leaning upon Yahweh Bashmael Shah, the Holy One of Israel and truth. All right, well now the Lord has given us that testimony and it has everything to do, all right, with reproving ourselves first and foremost, reproving our people and also testifying against the atrocities of you damn Edomites, man. All right, but that's the thing. Esau wants us to just shut up about it, all right? 
He wants us to continue to be niggas. He wants us to continue to be right oppressed, depressed. Shalom, y'all better shalom. Duh, right? Duh, right? And just uh, be on be on silent about it, man. All right, but that's not gonna happen. Shalom, y'all better shalom. bro. Back in Psalms 49, in verse. Psalms 50. Excuse me. Psalms 50 and 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Now, this is speaking about Esau and Jacob, man. All right, now, Esau is the one that's sitting and speaking against his brother Jacob, man. All right, because this goes back to that, um, right, that war in the womb. Genesis 25th chapter. All right, it's that perpetual hatred that this man has had for us. All right, Genesis uh, 27, right, Esau, the man, the man Esau himself says, for the days of mourning of my father be at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. All right. Now, hey, like our elders say all the time, Esau, he knows that he just can't just come, he just can't roll up on us, man. All right, he has to set up a narrative. He has to frame, he has to frame us, man. He has to put us in a category to pretty much when he does roll up on us, he's justified in the eyes of the people. All right, because he's losing, he's losing the war when it comes to uh, uh, information, when it comes to truth. All right, this is why scripture says for, um, for truth, which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. All right, because for a long time, truth wasn't going out. You see why? Because the Heavenly Father through His Son was totally right against us, man. He didn't give us His truth. All right, when we were in that dead estate, the brother read in Revelation 11 chapter, all right, those three, those three and a half days, man. We started at 1619. So all the way from uh, 1619 up until uh, 1969, 1970, that's when we were in that dead estate where the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shah, was just totally left us into the hand of our enemies, man. All right? But now, since that breath of life came back into us, now the truth is coming out. And that's what's ultimately making this man afraid, is truth coming out. Because why? His, his house was established and framed based upon lies. You see? So that truth that's been so long without fruit is being declared. All right? Being shown before the open firmament, man. All right? Brothers going uh, in the highways and byways, uploading their live epistles, man. Starting with the apostles and elders. And it's breaking. Let's grab uh, 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10 real quick. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I got a precept. Okay, you got it, bro. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter like 2, verse, verse 3. Yeah. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right? So the day uh, of Yahweh Shai is not going to come until, uh, well, it couldn't come until we fell away from the, the understanding of who we were as a people, until the Lord took away uh, his heritage from us, right? Which that happened during the time period that the brother's going into, man. You know, we were in captivity here uh, in Babylon the Great. We didn't know the name of the Lord. We couldn't call upon the Lord until he revealed his name back unto us, right? Which the scriptures talk about uh, um, power was given unto Esau, you know, for 40 and two months, that 350 years, you know, basically from 1620 to 1970, now we got the spirit of you know the Lord back dealing with us, right through Elder Abba Bivitz, and then you got Israelite Kansas Apostle Heart did a video on it uh, over the weekend, um, Fopi, you know, which the video that the Fopi uploaded was old, you know, it was like a couple years old, maybe like a year or two old, but they basically scoffing against um against uh, Elder Abba Bivitz, saying that he wasn't you know that he wasn't uh, Elijah. You know what I'm saying? Coming back in the reincarnation. Well, they don't even believe in reincarnation. You know what I'm saying? Basically, all of these different things. Oh, the virgin birth. They believe in a virgin birth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, uh, evil man is seduced as a wax worse and worse. But, you know, I brought out th that first uh, uh, Thessalonians 2 because, again, we had to go through that time period where we didn't have the spirit. And now we got that spirit. Now, we, that's how we know we're in the end times. You got it, bro. Nah, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Right. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay? Because what's happening is, is way much more than what, you, what the eyes can see. All right? Because we quoted Isaiah the 19th chapter earlier, how the Lord is setting up in the midst of the uh, borders of Egypt, right, an altar. <laughs> right? Now, do you physically see brothers setting up a, a, a bronze altar, sacrificing sheep and lambs? And no, you don't see that. All right, but we're doing it in the spirit by making our bodies a living sacrifice here in the yeah. spiritual Egypt. All right, so though we walk after the flesh, go ahead. God. It says, verse four, for the weapons of our warfare, like in my bad, verse three, 
for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. <laughs> you see? We, we're not, this is not a, a carnal warfare that we're taking, man. And see, Esau, right? Hey, Esau is sneaky, man, right? And this is why scripture says, for uh, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. He wants us to get carnal, man. Yeah. You see, because he knows that as soon as he could get us to be, that's why he sends agent, agent provocateurs, all right? You know, uh, the likes of Vocab Malone, all right? He sent uh, uh, angel provocateurs, these, these so-called uh, hobos that be coming up here, which they got they got new clothes on, you know, they got a pair of uh, new balances. Yeah, Jays, acting like they ho homeless, but clearly you not, but they come up here scoffing, talking shit, trying to, trying to uh, get an altercation. Why? Because Esau wants us to get carnal, man. All right, because he knows that at that point we'll be tempting our power, and then now we're out, uh, outside of the hedge of protection of the Lord. Yeah. And then we're totally in his hands. Because if you want to get carnal, Esau can take it there. He's got the weaponry for it, all right? This is his fucking world, man. The Lord gave it to him. The brother just read uh, how the, how the, uh, all right, first Thessalonians 2 and 3. Yeah, how it yeah, was given it to him, how yeah. it was, power oh. was given oh, it yeah, to yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I quoted that one, yeah, yeah. Revelation, yeah. Yeah, Revelation the sixth chapter, so power was given it to Esau. Power wasn't giving it to us right now. This is why we're still at the bottom of the bottom. So we got to deal wisely behind enemy lines. We have to deal in the spirit. We have to deal with wisdom. And the Lord, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and the Lord showed us. The Lord told us how to deal as sheep amongst the wolves, like the brother just beautifully quoted, man. Go ahead, up. Huh? God, this is verse. Richard from the top. God, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 10, verse 3 from the top. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. All right. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Why? Because what's the weapons of our warfare? His word, man. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of the Most High is as a double-edged sword. Go ahead. God, and it says, but mighty through Yahweh Bahashim Abishai to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh-huh. And what's it? Let's go to that word strongholds real quick, Baba Shai. Yeah, I got you. Yep. Because when you consider a stronghold, that's something that that will, that's that's built. That's a that's a uh, that's a wall of defense. All right, for uh, for against right an opposing nation that's coming against uh, to uh, wage war against you, man. All right, and Esau he is built up in a, 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 a wall, a fortified wall that was built out of fucking lies that our people are standing right next to. You see, as this wall is being torn down and ripped to pieces, right, the bricks are being all right uh, sledged out by this word. All right, because the Lord likened his word to a hammer, Jeremiah 23 and 29. Are not my words like a fire, not my words like a hammer. So as we're beating down this man's, all right, fortified walls of lies, are right, our people standing right next to it, about to, about to succumb to that great falling, man. You see? Uh, you got that word? Uh, this is uh, the word in the Greek, Strong's G3794. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it says, say, Orker Mana. I'm going to play it. Strong's G3794. Yeah. Yeah. You heard him on Audubon, whatever they said. But it says, a castle, stronghold, fortress, anything on which one relies. Anything on which one relies. So Esau has relied upon his stronghold, right, in the form of relying upon his lies, right, his media, all right, his propaganda, all right, his narrative. And this is why they're uh, they're likening us as into, right, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the number six, or, or, or the sixth yeah, most six. uh, hated uh, hated group, man, out here in America. Because why? Because we're knocking down this man's wall of lies, his wall of bullshit, his, his propaganda, his, 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 uh, his rhetoric, man. This is why, all right, I believe out there in, uh, brothers, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but South Dakota and North Dakota, right, the small hatters have pretty much came up with that uh, that law. If you bring out a particular uh, verse, in Ma it was Matthew 26, I believe, and you'll be uh, penalized. I know uh, Elder Apostle uh, Ram Live had went into the video a couple of weeks ago, man. All right, but pretty much these small hatters, all right, which are the ones that, that, that truly, right, run the whole narrative, all right? All right, the people that's in the land calling themselves the Jake uh, Double O's, all right, they're the ones that uh, uh, that's really being affected by this the most. Because, wow, the, for a long time, the world has viewed them as the most highest chosen people. But now they're found out to be liars, you see? And all this, all these squirmishes is happening in their land. All right, that's even more proof that they're not the people, man. Because if you're the people, all right, how in the hell are you getting, <laughs> right, uh, 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 drones, right, and, and rockets, 
all right, sent over there to your land by uh by the uh by the Persians, man, by Iran. So not only are these particular signs and wonders right happening that's demolishing this man's stronghold of lies, but also, but mainly this truth, man, this word that's being brought out, all right, through the men of the Lord. You got a point. Uh, keep going. Keep going. That word. Uh, no, that was too much. Okay. Let's get that end on to you. God, I got you. This is uh, Second oh, Corinthians got, chapter I think, 10. I think I know what you're talking about. Okay, about you got it. Yeah. So, in here. Yeah, I'll read it. I don't mean to interrupt. Just yeah. to back you up, we're talking about. This is on uh, Sheer, Sheerpost.com. It says, South Dakota governor signs bill into law that conflates criticism of Israel with with anti, uh, anti Shim, right? It says, um, let's see here. It says, South Dakota governor Christy Noam signed a bill into law last week that conflates some criticisms of the modern state of israel right which conflate means um uh the merging of two or more sets of information so basically if you criticize uh the the state of israel that's basically saying that you anti but they put it into law right so, so what's the repercussions those framers as we read earlier in psalms 94 and uh 20 mm -hmm. which frame mischief yeah. by law man you got it It says, uh, by signing the bill into law, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of- Hey, because you can't even say that word no more. As soon as you say that H word, the- uh, Oh, shit, oh. Hollow, you know what? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Well, well, then it was- Fair use, though. We reading the yeah, article. You know what I'm saying? We reading the article, man. It's for educational purposes, man. Yep. Okay, but the abbreviation IHRA, their definition of anti-Semitism must be taken into consideration in- investigations of unfair or discriminatory practices within the uh, state of South Dakota okay because it said uh, can you read that last part again it said uh, uh, must be investigated yeah well I'm gonna read this I want to read this but I'll read what you what I just said okay. it says by signing the bill into law the IHRA definition of anti shim must be taken into consideration in investigations of unfair or discriminatory practices. Let's read this real quick. Yeah. You got it. This is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 17 in the NLT. Yeah. The first to speak in court sounds right until the cross examination begins. Right. So the first to speak in court always sounds right. You see? That's yeah, yeah, that's your first witness. And that's Esau, right? Because why? He's he has control of everything. He has control of the media, he has control of the narrative. All right, we ain't got we don't None of you so-called black speckled Native Americans, none, no Israelites own Fox News, no, they don't own any type of major platform to where the whole world listens to them, man. All right, so Esau, he has the first narrative. He, he's the one that speaks first, right, in court, because really this whole earth is set up as a stage, that's set up as the Heavenly Father's court, man. Right, and he's, 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 for a long time, he's been having that narrative, all right? But now it says, until the examination How's it go? It says until the until the cross examination begins. Until the cross examination begins. Until a thorough until a thorough searching into a judicial investigation. That inquisition as Second Ezra six and uh, uh, eighteen go into man. All right. And you're found out to be liars, man. So this is why ultimately is about to just get to a point to where he's going to roll down upon us, man. He's going to say fuck it. The enemy's going the enemy's going to come in like a flood. But this is what we're doing, we're doing on a daily basis, right? Sign and crime for all the abominations. All right, so perhaps the Lord would give us that, that mark and sign of exemption from judgment, man, that, that the why. You see? You got it, bro, uh, in that article. Yeah, kind. Yep. <laughs> all right, it says, um, so basically, South Dakota is not the first state to utilize this definition of anti, because. That's the thing, bro. Esau with this new speak, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the scriptures say, uh, what is that, in Psalm 64, talking about uh, they wet their tongue like a sword. You know what I'm saying? Even okay. bitter words. Because basically, um, this definition, it says, uh, the definition it was first, uh, the definition of anti-Semitism uh, that's used in law, right? In this, in this law that we're talking about, was adopted in 2016 and lists drawing comparisons of contemporary Israeli policy to that of the Nazis as an example of anti-Semitism. So if you try to say like, basically it's a political, uh, uh, 
it's a uh, political uh, preference, right? Like if you have this political stance, you know what I mean? Then basically you anti sim right? It says. But you said it was drafted up in 2016. Yeah. Can you read that real quick, Isaiah 10? Isaiah 10 and 1. One to them that decree unrighteous decree decrees uh -huh. and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Yeah, which they have prescribed. Pre means before. Scribe means to write down. All right, to pin down. So Esau has been had this on the books. He's been had it written down, right? But he's just been waiting for the perfect opportunity for it to be rolled out. This is why at least about every every other year, all right, uh, 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 a heavy camp, a heavy campaign, right, uh, against what the Israelites are saying, right, is being spewed out by these damn devils. So he can just keep it out there. That's that's like his jazz. He's been keeping it out there, you know, like let you know, just keep it out there until he comes with that cross, man. And he's about to come with that cross. You see? But it's all been set forth with his prescribed decrees. They already have to be in the books. Send the stage, you got it, bro. Yep. Uh, all right. So it says, uh, it says, um, they signed the bill into law as Israel's uh, campaign in Gaza has killed over 31,000 Palestinians. Oh, you've been having a lot of uh, Palestinians right here as of just this week, and this, this is just only Tuesday. All right, we well, really started like last week, but it's a lot more protests uh, brewing up across Babylon the Great, man. You see. A lot more uh, uh, Palestinian, uh, pro-Palestinian protests it is. And then over there in the land of Israel, you got a lot of, you got a lot of uh, small hatters, all right, protesting against their own government. Where is that in the Bible? Where the children of Israel, they come back to their own land and they're going, they're going, they're going, they're going to riot. There's going to be another, it's going to be a protest there. They're going to be divided, man. So really, all right, all fingers is pointed to you to be the goddamn devil and a liar, man. Yep, it says, um, also, if you claim that the existence of the state of Israel is a, uh, in and of itself is a racist endeavor, that's another example of their <laughs> definition of anti-sim, anti you know what I'm saying? So basically, like, you know, if you say, uh, that's, but that's why we're on the list, bro, yeah. you know, because we, bro, we're coming out the scriptures, we're saying, we're coming out the scriptures and we say, we're going into the scriptures talking about a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, you know, these uh you know these different these different uh other nations they're gonna come in and fight against israel over there in the middle east right so basically by definition they're putting those biblical they're putting those the biblical perspectives uh um under scrutiny and saying nah that's hate that's hate speech you know to the point of persecution and there's 12 other states that have that have put that definition of anti-semitism into the law Man. so you know it's gonna only a matter of time until basically they start coming down on you know individuals that use that type of you know type of uh, uh that have that type of perspective or they use that type of verbiage yeah. you know what i'm saying like us mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, se uh second ezra's um 16 and 70. you know what i'm saying but you both got it nah, nah, i just want to add a quick little point because he saw the gym is not working like that anymore you know what I'm saying? You got Russia out here. They don't publicize the Russian icon and, it, and all the things happening. So now Jake is starting to wake up and stuff. And you have Jake coming in. Just, you have Jake really just seeing it just so they could be condemned. At the end of the day, he's just like, my shit ain't working no more. I done did this. I'm doing this. But they still find a way to click on these certain type of videos somebody is like. But that's know? one thing about, uh, that's one thing about wine. Because, you know, his, his philosophies and pushing this whole Western Westernization, his, his campaign, his media, all this shit, right, is locking into his wine. All right, well, wine doesn't last forever. The effects of wine, that is. You may be drunk for a while, you know, giddy, you know, all discombobulated, confused, don't know who's who, don't know who you are. All right, but eventually, it starts to wear off, and that's where we're at right now, point in time. All right, Esau's wine is starting to wear off. But you people, you're still drunk as hell. Don't yeah. get it twisted. <laughs> yeah, all right, the only ones that's truly sober are, are those uh, those that's, uh, in the, that's of the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, but nonetheless, a lot, as scripture says, the nations have drunken up for wine and now they're mad. Yeah. That's why you have particular other nations like Iran and India is saying that um, westernization is worse than slavery, man. That's because they're, the effects of that wine and that even they themselves have drunken for a long time the water, bro, are starting to wear off, man. Isaiah 47 and 12, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, 
If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. That's done. Like the priest is going into that that that, that wine, or uh, you know that that wine also can be likened unto his witchcraft is wearing off, man. That's why the scripture says, "Stand now with thine enchantments, man." You know, and then the next verse goes goes into Esau uh, uh, being uh, weird in his witchcraft, man. You know, they're uh, steadily having councils, okay, uh, to pretty much. Uh, uh, Save their uh save their falling uh uh rulership, man. You know? Like, yeah, this is why they opened up CERN. CERN is still, you know, activated, still split, you know. <laughs> Esau is trying to do any and everything he can to all right, judgment. to escape his judgment. You know? All right, but it's only so long until all right, uh you as Cain can be a fugitive and a vagabond. Right. To the most high himself deals with your ass, man. Yep. You got it out. This is Psalms chapter two, um, verse one in the NLT it says why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? Why are you plans? mad? <laughs> why are you mad, Clarence? <laughs> yeah. Start from the top, Bob. God, this is verse one. It says, why are the nations so angry? Yeah, we know why you damn nations are angry, man. Because you want to be us. All right? You hate us because you ain't us, man. Right. Psalms 83. Yeah. All right? That crafty counsel. You see? Now, although we get up upon you damn Edomites strong with the wicked elites, all right, although we get up on you the hardest, well, we get up on all you damn nations, man, because all y'all hate us. All right, Revelation 11 chapter speaks about how y'all sent gifts to one another. And who are those gifts? We were, man. All right, and until this day, man, hey, y'all are still making merchandise off of the Most High's chosen people. All right, but that's coming to an end. Jeremiah the 30th chapter, the Lord's going to break our chains. He's going to break, all right, the, uh, the yoke of bondage off of our necks, and the nation shall no more make merchandise of the Lord's people, man. God, this is verse. I'm gonna read verse one again from the top. Psalms two in the NLT, verse one. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? Yeah, why do they waste their time with futile plans? All right, shooting rockets to the moon. You wasting? What are you gonna change, man? <laughs> you really think that's gonna that's gonna scare you? How was shot in the angel? Oh shit, we can't come back. Let's see what they doing? Which me speaking as a man, I believe all that's just a damn lie. You ain't shooting shit up there, man. I'm just speaking as a man. That's a waste. That's a waste. Like, what is that? What is that going to prevail? What What are you doing? <laughs> you know, what is that going to change? You still going to be destroyed. Iran and Russia, North Korea, they're still going to shoot missiles over here. You know it. God, first, uh, first two. It says the kings of the earth prepare for battle. Yeah, the kings of the earth prepare for battle. This is what we're seeing. All right, we're seeing all these different heathen nations prepare themselves. The ultimate is the Lord mustering the host of the battle together. It says in Isaiah the 13 chapter. All right, the valley of decision, multitudes, multitudes. All right, this is the Heavenly Father through His Son's work, man. How He's sending forth the, the holy angels to work upon the minds of all these kings, man. All right, and He's He's confusing them in their own council. Can we get that in Psalms 33? Uh, that council that He did brought to not. You got it up. Time to read that verse two from the top. The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together yeah, against the, the Lord. The rulers plot together against the Lord. Go ahead. And against his anointed and one. And against his anointed one, man. All right, starting with them plotting against, right, Yahweh Bashmal Shah, right, and, and his anointed ones, well, Yahweh Shah, right, and, right, uh, the elect men. Yep. The elect of the nation of Israel. Pursuant to Revelation 12 and 17, how the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. All right, but it's going to be brought to naught, man. Okay, the Lord is just setting you up for the ultimate, all right, uh, uh, I got your bitch moment. You see, <laughs> like, just made me think about Dave yeah. Chappelle. All right, but that's what the Lord is setting up. All right, and it's going to be up on a on a on a on a broad level, man, on a broad scale, a worldwide scale, man. All right, the Heavenly Father is going to send His Son with the holy host of angels. Where's the uh, chariot sign? At? And Esau knows that this place is going down, man. Uh, me and the brothers, we had seen a uh, civil war last night. You know, and I was just thinking to myself, like here in this movie, you got, all right, you got a, uh, um, you got to be a uh, rock, you got to be this movie being aired all across Babylon the Great. Oh, y'all got another. One. You got this movie being aired all across Babylon the Great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this great insurrection that happened right inside the White House, man. You know, them finding, them trying to look for the president, and just shooting all up in, the, in, all up inside the White House, man. You see? Now, what type of kingdom in their right mind will allow that to be aired? Allow that to be published, you know, on, on, on their uh, on their movies, man? You know? To be to be aired throughout, you know, their country, man? That lets you know 
that this place is done and the leaders, they know that it's done. That's why they have underground bunkers because they know that this place is about to be pelted with missiles, man. You see, but the thing is, all right, they think that they're gonna rise up right out of the ashes. They're gonna come back on top in, in, in a matter of time. All right, after the after the nuclear fallout, well, you got now you got that movie, uh, the, uh, uh, Fallout. fallout yeah. You got the, the series Fallout, man. Cause they know, <laughs> they know, but yet they're deceiving themselves with lies, with all these witchcrafts and enchantments. But they're not Satan ain't talking to him like he used to though. You see, <laughs> yeah, Satan. You know all these demons that they're used to summoning up. All right, the Rothschild, the Dupont, the Gettys, you know. They're not, they, say, these demons ain't fucking with them no more, man. Why? Because the demons work for Yahweh Bashmal Shah. This is Obadiah chapter 1, verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, yeah. whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? So just land back off the free point, man, because this is going into Esau. His pride had deceived him. The Lord got him in the state like he had Pharaoh, man, hardened his heart. Esau clearly see his stuff is done. He's not going to get it back, but he got the, he's deceiving himself like, Nah, we're going to bounce back. We're going to do this. Shit, we're going to make war with the Lord and we're going to win. You know, that's why we're going into Psalms too. Why did he even imagine a vain thing? Empty. It has no power, man. He's imagining that they're going to be able to overthrow the Lord, break, not going into slavery under the Israelites as it's going to go into the Psalms too. Esau got this. He got. He, he's in his own American dream now. <laughs> you know? Yep. You got, bro. Psalms 33, verse 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel. Oh, we down. Okay. For he spake and it was done. Yeah, he spake and it was done. Right, you consider uh, the, uh, the the mighty wonders uh, and works and acts and miracles that the heavenly Father did through Moses and Aaron. All right, he told him to simply speak. Right, you know, speak unto Pharaoh. All right, and, you know, speak those plagues into existence, and, and it and it happened, man. And that's what we're doing. We're speaking. We're chanting this place down, and it's happening. That's why we uh, read First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, the tenth chapter earlier. We don't need to take up physical arms and scores and guns, man. No, we just need to simply speak the words of the Lord, right? And that's all that's needed to bring down this man's wicked uh, empire, man. In the time of Joshua, Joshua the sixth chapter, right? All that was needed to bring down Jericho for, was for us to be obedient to the words of the Lord, yeah. right? March around the city, all right, for seven days, all right? And blow the, blow the ram's horns, man. So this is what we're doing. We're blowing the horn and we're, we're compassing this place, man. All right, the, the men of the Lord is, is, is walking circles around this goddamn place, man. That's going to be brought down in due time. You got it, bro. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of non effect. Yeah, so all the counsels, right, of you damn heathens, all right, the W to the E to the F form, the W to the H to the O form, it's going to be brought to naught, man. And we don't need to be there, all right, all right the, the men of the Lord, we don't need to be there uh, physically to hear what, what they saying up in these damn councils, man. We already know what y'all talking about. Scriptures lets us know what y'all talking about. Psalms 83, that's ultimately what it's going into, man. Psalms the second chapter as the brothers read. That's what, yeah, Psalm 64, man. That's what y'all are talking about, all right? Ultimately, you're plotting against the Lord and his anointed, right? And you want to continue to, uh, to rule. But how does Psalms the second chapter conclude? The Lord is gonna set up his holy king upon Zion, Zion man. He ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be you damn Edomites. Damn small has about to be blown off the damn map, man. All right, I remember it like two years ago, uh, I ran, it was at the beginning of the year, too. I believe it was like in January, damn near January the first, like two, maybe three years ago. But I ran and right and drew up this map, right, of, uh, of the land of Israel for all the targets it's going to hit. And it, uh, for all the targets, it was like little red dots. That whole land was filled with red dots, man. And that's just I ran alone. <laughs> You know what I mean? And Iran, they have this thing uh, under their under their uh, under their country called Missile City. You see, Missile City. They got a whole city underground, just slam packed full of goddamn missiles, man. Right? Yeah, for Babylon and also Israel, man. You see, but the thing is, the uh, the difference between uh, Babylon and Israel is that the land of Israel is gonna be rebuilt. All right, underneath the com uh, the commands of Yahweh Shah and the elect men. All right, but you got it, bro. And this is Psalms 2. Psalms 2, I'm going to read verse uh, three, 3 again. It's like in verse 2 again. It says, the king, this is an NLT also. The king of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers fought together against the Lord, Yahweh Bahashanah Bashai, and against his anointing. Let us break their chains, they cry. 
and free ourselves from slavery to the power. Right. This is what these Edomites right, are trying to do. And not just these Edomites, but all these nations. They're trying to uh, free themselves from slavery because they know that slavery is coming. You see, they, they, they looking into CERN. All right. The Lord probably is showing them the future. All right. And they see. All right. They see all. They, all these nations see themselves in slavery underneath uh, Yahweh Shah and the holy men of right, the nation of Israel. You see, so they see that, and now they're trying to do everything they can, all right, to, to free themselves from that slavery. You see? Yeah, that's the house of David, the throne of David, which that's the that's what the throne of David consists of, gathering all 12 tribes together. All right, that's happening right now in the spirit as we got the 12 tribes on this one stick, all right, and also subjugating all the damn heathen, putting their ass into slavery and work brigades, just like Solomon did. No, you got it. This is uh, verse four, it says. Which really, they in the spirit though. Yeah. If I was an Edomite, I'd be doing the same shit, man. Yeah. No cap, <laughs> you know? Who in their right mind wants to wants to volunteer for slavery? <laughs> wants to just go in slavery, just, you know, with no resistance. So really these, these Edomites, they're, they're in the spirit, on the, in the left-hand spirit that is. Yeah. As scripture says, right, uh, um, uh, second Corinthians the 13th chapter, for we can do nothing against the truth before the truth, man. All right, so Esau's plan, Esau and all these other nations are playing right inside of the, uh, inside the um, confines of prophecy, man. You got it, bro. This is uh, Psalms 2 and NLC verse uh, 4 now. It says, but the one who rules in heaven laughs. Woo! But the one who rules in heaven laughs. Yeah, Yahweh. All right, through his son, Yahweh shot. They're laughing right now, man. <laughs> as the, as the uh, master chess player, or uh, yeah, as the master chess player as, as he is, man. All right, he's playing chess with himself, and he's already preordained. All right, who's gonna win? Dang. <laughs> you know, he gonna win every time. Yeah. You know. You and it not. says the Lord scoffs at them. Yeah, the Lord is scoffing at you. How is he scoffing at you? Through his men. All right, this is what we're doing right now. We're, we're casting up that taunting proverb against the king of Babylon, yep. Isaiah 14, Habakkuk 6, and not just only us, but also, all right, your own counterparts. <laughs> you damn Edomites. You, Man, y'all scoffing at your damn selves. Can we get a, what was that, Sirach 21? 21 and uh, uh, 20? 21 and 20. Yep. I'll grab my phone if you can't get it. Yeah, 21 and 27, because you was holding it earlier, right? Yeah, I was holding it yeah. earlier. This is Sirach chapter 21, verse 27. When the ungodly curses Satan, he curses his own soul. Right, when the ungodly curses Satan, all right, he curses his own soul. Who's the ungodly? The man of sin, you damn Edomites. All right, so when you curse yourself, all right, you got you got uh, um, these particular, um, you know, uh, so-called truth truth or platforms. All right, um, name a few, uh, Dabu, which, you know, he may be a Jake, I don't know. All right, but, you know, some of these other ones. What's some other ones? Uh, redacted. Yeah, redacted. <laughs> which, they may be Jake. We don't know, all right? But just hypothetically speaking, if they are uh, uh, Edomites, but... We, I mean, hell, you got small hatters, man. Over there in Atlanta, Israel right now, divided against themselves. Russia. Yeah, Russia. Yeah, exactly. That's the, come on. Russia. How can I forget that? <laughs> yeah. Russia. Russia. Okay. So when the ungodly curse himself, he curses it. Uh, uh, read again. God, this is uh, Sirach chapter 21, verse uh, 27. Yeah. It says, when the ungodly curse of Satan, he curses his own soul. Yeah, he curses his own soul, man. All right. So that's a part of that, your own tongue. You fall upon your own tongue, man. All right. And it's also part of the Lord scoffing at you. Yep. You see? As we were just reading in Psalms 2. Go back to that. God, I just want to add a quick point. That's a large sign that this kingdom is falling. Because what did you, how should I say? Can, he said that if a kingdom divided against him, it cannot stand. And you're seeing that happening right now with Esau cursing his own self, man. You know? Mm -hmm. But it's just uh, Psalms yeah, 2. You got the movie Civil War out. Like, damn, bro. Like that. Right before. Like, if, you, if you're a functioning nation that with a strong grip, there's no way in hell you would uh, publish a movie a civil war about your own kingdom falling man these are all signs that the lord is putting right in front of the eyes of everybody yep. can we can we get at that real quick matthew 12 and the nlt because okay. it literally says civil war you know and also when that movie was uh published april 12 2024 that was the same day as the actual civil war took place here upon america april 12 1861. Yeah. So, does stuff like that yeah but it's, it's the lord doing that man Showing these, putting the signs, putting blatant right in front of your face. Because once again, Esau thinks that he's doing these things, right? Showing the revelation of the method, all right? With his uh, predictive programming and all these. No, man, it's the Lord, all right? So the spiritual, uh, so the spiritual minded can pick up upon these particular signs and wonders. 
After this, uh, everybody can switch. John. After that pre -sign. Matthew 12 and 25, <laughs> our side knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil yeah, war. Yeah, knew their thoughts, knew their counsels, knew their plans. Start with the top of the mm -hmm. Yahweh Shad knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. Yeah, any kingdom. That included us. Yep. How, do, how did northern kingdom and southern kingdom get split apart? Through civil war. All right? <laughs> you had times where we're... And Jake, and that's a cut on you uh, damn Negro onlys. All right? That, uh, that try to say because... Uh, 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 so-called Negroes, right, and, uh, uh, and Native Americans, we uh, were duking it out for a little bit over here in the land of America during the time of uh, uh, slavery, man. That, 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 that the Natives can't be uh, Israelites because we were, we were at odds, man. Well, Scripture tells you, Isaiah 11 chapter, how Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, they're gonna they're gonna have that controversy, man. Zechariah 11 chapter, how the Lord Himself is gonna break the bands of brotherhood. You see. So all throughout our history as Israelites, we always had a civil war amongst, each, amongst ourselves, man. All right? So that includes us, but especially, right, you so-called white people. All right? You, you damn Edomites, man. All right? Because you're notorious for the civil war that you had here upon the soils of America. You start from the top, and then we'll pass to the next people. It says, Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. It's doomed. What, what does doom mean? <laughs> Done. Through. <laughs> Finito. Out of there, man. You see? For the day of doom shall be the end of this age, man. Second Edge of Seven Chapter. And that day of doom is gonna come. It's gonna come with a bang. It's gonna come with those 200 million missile, those 200 million uh, missile warheads up here on Babylon, uh, Babylon the Great, man. You see? That's the day of doom. Got it. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. Yeah, family splintered by feuding will uh, uh, fell apart, man. You got the Dukes of Edom, all right, splintered. All right, you got you got the Temanites, all right, against the uh, the Malachites, all right. <laughs> all the Dukes of Edom is, is, is duking it out, man. <laughs> you see? So, hey, this place is done, all right. So, um, who, who's, who's gonna go next? Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. It's like it says, it says, the burden of Egypt, behold, Yahweh shall shine right at the point of swift cloud. Right, the burden of Egypt. Right. And uh, matter of fact, my brother got the blue letter. <coughs> we grabbed that word uh, burden. You know, because you know, basically when you go into that, that word burden, it goes into uh, something you got to bear, right, or something you got to deal with. You know, and that's what we're out here to prophesy. We're out here to prophesy the, the, the downfall of America, all right? That, that's that's at the top of our priority list, all right? We're not out here, all right, uh, uh, giving you any uh, inkling of an idea that America is going to continue. It's not. This place is absolutely through. It's absolutely done, right? Look, just look at the people. You know, look at these people. You know, they're overweight, all right? They bugged out. Uh, they'll fall for anything. You know, and, and best believe, you know, uh, uh, Putin, right? These other kings of the earth, they're looking at America like America is right for the taking, you know? So again, as we're about to read in Isaiah 19, we're just here to, we're, we're just, uh, we're the bearers of bad news for you Americans, you know? You got it all. Strong's 84853, Masha, it says, low, bearing, tribute, burden, lifting, um, it says, utterance, oracle, burden, oracle, burden, right, oracle, you know, that's what this is, right, when the scriptures go into uh, the testimony of our Lord, being the spirit of prophecy, right, we're out here pushing the oracles of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, the prophecies, and Baba Gashai, was there a Strong's number on that? Did you call that? Yeah, 84853, 4853, was there anything more on the uh, Strong's definitions? Yeah, okay, come 
wiki, bro. Yeah, hey, yeah. it says, oh, uh, you got it. <laughs> you got it, brother. But it says, uh, masha'ah, which the root word is nasha'ah, right? Like, uh, to lift up, to bear up. Mm-hmm. You know how we say, like, nasa is really like a Hebrew word. Mm-hmm. Nasha'ah, like, you know what I'm saying? To lift mm-hmm. up, to bear up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that root word is, uh, is nasha'ah, but masha'ah is basically the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but it, but like when you carry something or you or you you put some on your shoulders right you know what i'm saying it's lifted up you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's a burden you know what i'm yeah. saying so it's like it's like it, with that implication yeah so just yeah and that know. burden you know really you know ever since this word has been going out right it, it, it's already been a burden to you people right and, and as we get closer and closer all right to world war three as we get closer and closer to all hell breaking loose that burden you know that uh that pro- these prophecies being fulfilled is really starting to weigh on the minds of these people you know and you can see it they may not want to believe it right they may want to keep walking up and down the street and act like they don't see us but at the end of the day we can see the effect that the prophecies are having on you people you know it's not just the gmos it's not just all right your life sucking right being a, 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 a you know a sorry excuse for an existence it's not just that, right? It's these prophecies, you know. You got it. Now, this is uh, this is just going into what the priest is saying. This is uh, Job 15 and uh, 22. Mm-hmm. So I get 21. A dreadful sound is in his ears, Woo! and prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. Hey, got it. A dreadful sound. All right, that's what this is, right? But there's balance to it, right? Because the scriptures talk about uh, uh, the good news, right? But guess what? The good news isn't for everybody. The good news is only for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans of the elect, right? Specifically of the elect, you know? So there's a balance to this message, all right? God, you're Jeremiah 28. God, I got you. God. This is Jeremiah chapter 28 in verse 8. It says, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right, so that's the track record of the prophets, right? When you go back and you read the scriptures and you read about, right, all the prophets that you, that you can uh, read in, you know, the Old Testament, uh, you know, uh, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, you know, Amos, Hosea, right? All these prophets are prophesying the downfall of a kingdom, right? We're not pushing peace, right? And, and the Lord is going to send peace and love and happiness mm-hmm. on you Americans. Hell no. All right. As, could you read that again, Bubba Shaw? God, this is Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. It says, The prophet, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of, and of pestilence. Right, and that precept right there is also how you identify who the men of the Lord are. Right? That's a that's a key precept that you gotta use to discern who's actually serving the Lord, right? Because we know that a lot of people claim, all right, to uh, uh, to know what these scriptures are talking about, right? But guess what? They're not actually they're not actually prophesying against, you know, America, right? So that's a that's a conflict of interest, you know. But again, only the elect, only the remnant are going to actually you know discern the difference on that. You know, we can jump back to Isaiah 19. Let's anybody have. Okay, I got you. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 19. In verse one, <clears throat> in verse one, it says, "The burden of Egypt, behold, Yahweh Bashiach shot ride it upon a swift cloud." Right, he ride it upon a swift cloud, right, and that cloud, right, is really a code, all right, for what we know as uh, the chariots of the Lord, right? Could a brother hold uh, Psalms one hundred five? Uh, I believe it's a, uh, I don't know which verse, but if you type in uh, "rise on the wings of the wind," that verse, right? Could you read that again, Bapha Shah? God, uh, this is Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 19 and verse uh yeah, in verse 1. It says, The burden of Egypt, behold, Yahweh Bashim Yahushah rideth upon the swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved as at, at its presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Right, the Lord shall ride upon a swift cloud. All right, and when you read the scriptures, the scriptures make it abundantly clear. All right, that uh, you know what you know as so-called UFOs are actually the chariots of heaven. 
Right? right? And we're going to get a precept to back that up. You got it, Doc. Psalms it. chapter 100 and verse... Psalms chapter 104 and verse 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who make it the clouds his chariot. Right. Who make it the clouds his chariot. All right. And what's a chariot? Right. What is that talking about? Right. You can basically liken an ancient chariot to a modern day uh, a vehicle, a modern day car. All right. And what's the point of a, of, of a chariot, of a car, of a vehicle to get from one place to another? All right. Could you read that again? Psalms chapter 104 and oh, verse three. I got to say something on that, too. Uh, in the first of my head. So when we did the lesson, uh, LDI to talk to myself, did a lesson on uh, Judges, I'm trying to remember what chapter it was, but um, basically it was this chapter that talks about the, how they had iron chariots, and um, the original man-made chariots were used for what purpose? War. War, right? So it would be horse-driven, right? And then you may have two horses drive one chariot or one horse drive a chariot, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But on that chariot, you may have a quiver with some bows, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, with some arrows in there. Mm -hmm. You may have, you know, a sword off to, to the side. You know, you might got your dagger right there, and you probably might got, maybe got your spear or whatever, you know, in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what, you know, really like a chariot. Like even we think about like uh, World War One, the invention of, uh, you know, what, the, I'll say the utilization of warplanes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, utilization of tanks in World War II. You saw develop different technology, different chariots, mostly during war. You see uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. So kind of the like ultimate it. chariot, huh? Like that? Those chariots? Yeah. The, oh, yes. You can show that, brother. You know what I'm saying? That, now that's the that's the Roman Empire. Yeah, turn your brightness down. That's in the Roman Empire, right? Which you know at that time was kind of used. It was used in war too, but. Uh, you know, they would use it in uh, in the Colosseums and stuff like that, you know, for entertainment and stuff. But you can see the uh, the man kind of driving the horse. He might got some bows in there in his hand. And then you got the, the archer in the back. back you see what I'm saying? Now, that's a, that's a dual axle chariot. Yeah. The like original chariot. Right. The original chariots have one axle, though. You know what I'm saying? But basically, just going into your point, uh, Iraq, you know, how the chariots are really... Uh, uh, like man-made chariots, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just for transportation. Right. Because if that's the case, you just ride on a horse. Yeah. But, you know, the yeah. chariots that man made was for war, specifically for war. God. You see what I'm saying? That's how the Lord got his chariot set up. You God. got it, bro. Water. That's Exodus 15 and 3 all day. We'll read that real quick. God, this is Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Right, because as the priest just mentioned, I mean, what ultimately, right, we're going into the chariots. <laughs> what ultimately is the purpose of the chariots? All right, the purpose of the chariots is to basically wage war <laughs> on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. All right, thus saith the Lord. You got it, bro. God, this is Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Yep. It says, Yahweh Bashi Shah is a man of war, yep. and, Ye and Yahweh Bashi Shah is his name. Yep, Yahweh Bashi Shah is a man of war. All right, and that's a key attribute. All right, that has been left out of uh, uh, Bible school, right? What they call it, uh, Sunday school, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the Bible hell, study. Bible, Bible study. study, you know, ba oh, vacation Bible study. <laughs> All right, there was no lessons on uh, on this Exodus 15 and 3. Why? Because when you read the scriptures, the Lord lets you know, all right, that the war that he's waging is on a specific group of people. All right, a specific nationality. All right, and uh, uh, that's Esau Edom. Right, because he's the head honcho of the planet Earth right now. All right, he's the one in the rulership uh, a position. All right. Can we grab uh, what, what uh, yeah. yeah, Revelation 19. Revelation. Uh, this is Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 34. It says, "Behold, clouds from the east and from the north uh, unto the south, and they are very terrible." Like it very horrible to look upon uh full of wrath and and storm yep. you know go, going into the chariots all right the 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 the, the, the chariots uh the, the swift instruments of yahweh shimei yep. all right kind that's it and that was the reaction 
right? We can hold this too on deck. We can hold up, uh, what is it, Exodus 19? Yep. Right, where the Lord pulled up on our people in the wilderness. That was the same reaction uh, uh, of our people. Absolute uh, uh, mayhem, fear, right? Uh, uh, and what, what was the words that scripture used again, Bob Kishan? Uh Horrible to look upon. Horrible to look upon, right? Full it's of not, wrath. Yep, full of wrath, right? We can grab that Exodus uh, 19. Yeah. Oh, actually. <clears throat> yeah, you can start at verse 16. Wow. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings. Yep, thunders and lightnings. All right, and essentially. I wanted to get this preset right because we're trying to get a, a, a we're trying to get an image we're trying to get an illustration of what it's actually going to look like when the lord pulls up now we don't we don't know right we'd be lying if we told you we know exactly what it's going to look like and exactly how many chariots are going to be we don't know that we just know uh, uh, uh the prophecies and the, the the images that were given uh in the scriptures right so we're going to read this exodus 19 right second Exodus 13 is a good chapter yep. you know amongst others Got Ezekiel, Ezekiel, the first chapter. You know? You already said Zechariah 5, right? No, the flying, yep, Zechariah 5. Kind, we'll get them, we'll get them, Lord. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings yep. and a thick cloud upon the mount. Right. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud keyword right keyword he said a thick cloud right a thick cloud upon the mount all right you can link that up with isaiah 19 bible shall you read that verse again exodus chapter 19 and verse 16 and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings yep and a thick cloud upon the mount yep and when you get the context of this chapter right it's basically you know uh, uh, the israelites our people right, under the direction of Moses, right, uh, uh, encamped around uh, Mount Sinai, right? And again, that's why the scriptures talk about how Israel is the only nation that the Lord has dealt with, right? No other group of people, all right, experience what we experience coming out of Egypt, all right, and then experiencing what we're reading here in, in uh, Exodus 19 and verse 16, all right? There was no other nation, all right, that got the, the, the privilege, all right, of uh, uh, experience, experiencing this. All right, and that uh, matter of fact, Paul talked about that in First uh, Corinthians, the tenth chapter, right? How all of our fathers were underneath the cloud, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay. Was there any more on that? We keep going. Come on. Continuing, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, yep. so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. All the people that were in the camp trembled. Right. All right, trembled. Yeah. Right. So when the Lord when the Lord cracks the skies, when he cra uh, cracks the, uh, the heavens, right, and he comes in the chariots, so-called UFOs, all right, people are gonna be absolutely uh, 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 bugging the hell out, all right, shitting their pants. That's why they're gonna say, uh, you know, let the rocks fall on us and hide us from the wrath yep. of the Lamb. Because when Yahweh Shah come, he's not gonna be playing no games. Yep. As, as the world thinks, all right, which they ignorantly call him Jesus because the truth has went out, and they know his name is not that, but they ignorantly do so, all right, but the image that they project when he arrives is he gonna come, he gonna use naked baby angels. They're gonna be taking Edomites up. Everybody gonna be singing and joining hands. No, it ain't gonna be like that. The scriptures even go as far as to say that a, a drop is gonna be saved compared to a wave. First of all, all right. So most people on earth, they ain't, they ain't gonna make it. You gotta be an Israelite first and foremost, and then of that remnant. All right, and then on top of that, it says that the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Yeah, how was Shah's chair? It's gonna block out the sun, man. But it's gonna be a dark and heavy day. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Shah. All right. The Lord, he's coming to, man, he's coming to basically <laughs> spring clean, man. He's coming to exterminate, man. So, the hell do you think the Lord flooding the entire planet Earth and, and saving eight people was about? That's called extermination. <laughs> Ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing. You know? And that's listen, that's that's scriptural. Right, we're 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 spiritual. We're, we're we're just bringing out these prophecies, man. You know, was that it on that Exodus 19? Anybody got something? Yeah, you got it. 
This is just, uh, uh, this is uh, Psalms 18. I'm reading the GNT. In my trouble, I called to the Lord. I called to my power for help. Yep. In his temple, he heard my voice. You can get it, brother. He listened to my cry for help. Yep. Then the earth trembled and shook. Yep, this is a Psalm of David. Yeah. All right, the earth trembled and shook. You got it off. Yeah. The foundations of the mountains rocked and quivered. Yep. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahushua was angry. Yep. Smoke poured out of his nostrils, a consuming flame and burning coals from his mouth. Yep. And if you're paying attention to the words that are being used in this verse, yeah. a lot of the same words are uh, in Exodus 19. God. Right? Because again, when Yahweh Bashim Yahushua makes his makes his appearance, right? The whole entire, uh, the scriptures talk about that. And a uh, matter of fact, let's hold, hold that real quick. Keep the step we got though. Sirach 16, uh, yep. Sirach 16, where it goes into, uh, I think you can start at verse 16, where it talks about everything shaking, mm -hmm. right? Because again, the chariot itself, and there's gonna be more than one, right? We had uh, Zach uh, Zachariah 5 held on deck, where it talks about uh, the flying rolls, okay. right? The chariots come in all shapes and sizes, you know? The Lord gonna get, <laughs> Lord finna open up and really show you his uh his ar his armory. Yeah. You know? His collection. Yeah, I got it. You got it? Got yeah, it. this is Sirach chapter 16. And I'm gonna get verse 18. Yeah. It says, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all that there that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. Woo! Baba Gasha, could you read that again and read it slower, Baba Gasha? Yeah, it's like you. Uh, this is Sirach chapter 16 and verse 18. Yep. It says, Behold, the heaven yep. and the heaven of heavens, the deep, yep. and the earth, and all that therein is. Yep. And all that is therein, right? <laughs> That's why the scriptures also go into, uh, <laughs> you know, the earth reeling to and fro like a drunkard. You know, now we know that that's also going to be because those because uh, those missiles hitting, right? And those missiles causing the uh, you know tectonic plates and things of that nature to yeah. tremble yeah. and shift. Yep. Yeah. But also you have the actual chariot itself that's going to shake up. You know, the gravitational pull of the Earth. It's going to shake. Yeah. I mean, let's read that one more time, Baba Kisha, and then we'll, we'll go back to that. Okay, so right, chapter 16 and verse 18. It says, "Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, yeah. the deep." And the earth and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. Yep. And again, man, we're out here pushing for a change in, in, in rulership, right? The earth needs new man, uh, new management, all right? So not only is the earth going to receive new management, right, in the form of Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, 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 King David, the, the 12, the 144,000, but the actual earth itself is getting ready to be rearranged, all right? And we've been going into that through the spirit the last like few months, you know, because again, there are things, there are particular parts of the planet Earth that nobody has access to. All right, all that is going to be opened up unto the uh, uh, unto the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, is that it on there? Yeah, it's, a little, it's like one more verse. Uh, uh, verse 19, it says, "The mountains also and foundations of the earth shall be shaken with trembling yep. when the Lord looketh upon them." Yep, tectonic place. You know, the Lord, the earth is about to change, man. Everything is about to change. Yeah. You know, we can go back to that. Baba Gisha. God, this is, um, um, this is Psalms 18. And I'll come in at, um, at nine. It says, he tore the sky open and came down. Woo! Yeah, with, yeah this is, it's written beautifully, man. Yeah. It's written beautifully. He tore the sky open and came down with a dark cloud under his feet. Man. He flew swiftly on his winged creature. <laughs> man, again, man, you gotta see, you gotta yeah. visualize these scriptures. Yeah. Right? You read scriptures like that, you gotta visualize it, man. Because guess what? That's coming to the planet Earth. Alright, that's why we're fervently out here, <laughs> week in and week out. All right, uh, making our calling and election sure, man, because we know that this is coming to the planet Earth. And with that coming is great death. Yep. All right? Yep. Morning, man. Was that it on that? Uh, I just got a little more over here. Done. Uh, he says, he flew swiftly on his winged creature. He traveled on his wings of, wi of the wind. Yep. He covered himself with darkness. This clouds full of water surrounded him. Hailstones, flashes of fire Hail came stones, from the lightning. Flashes of fire. Mm -hmm. What was that again? Hailstones, flashes of fire came from the lightning before him and broke through the dark clouds. Yes. Yeah. 
so I, that's a, yeah, appreciate it. Kind, kind. This is Judas chapter 16, verse 15. It says, for the mountains shall be made from the foundation uh, with the water, the rocks shall be melted as as wax, thy presence, uh, like it. Thy, thy, you got it, got it, you got to take your time, brother. <laughs> Getting excited. Yeah, I <laughs> like that. Uh, Call it and read it again. Bob uh, This is Judas chapter 16, verse 15. It says, For the mountains shall be moved for the from the their foundation yeah. uh, uh, with the water, the rocks shall melt as as wax yep. as thy presence. Is at thy presence, it's like it. It says, "Yet thou art merciful." Uh, that two. reminds me of Haggai chapter three. Mm -hmm. uh, the same chapter it talks about the horn of the Most High, the power having the hiding of His power, mm -hmm. and the mountains being basically trembling in that when they see the power of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's basically going into the chariots, man. You yeah. know, like your brother quoted an aside from uh, Judith. This was common knowledge. Judith was a woman, you know, of, of Israel. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That uh, the Lord used to deliver from uh, Holofernes during the uh, Babylonian Empire, right? And this was something that she knew. You know what I'm saying? So we basically bringing back this this information that was once common knowledge of chariots of Israel. It wasn't no like secret thing. You know what I'm saying? Back then in the ancient world to know that the Lord, when he comes back, he alters terrains. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? He, he makes stuff move, makes makes stuff shake and bake. I just wiped this off. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Take an extra oil on their hands. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So that's what's going to happen when he comes back, Daniel 12 and 2. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When he comes back, it's going to be that times uh, 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 144, man. Yeah. See? So, yeah. you got it, man. I, 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 I was going to say real quick because. Uh, how to preach out now the brothers been bringing out these scriptures right how this has been common knowledge amongst our people well uh right. you know especially in the ancient world but hell even on this side in the americas yep. you consider our forefathers right out there in the cotton fields yep. right uh, singing sweet uh a swing low sweet cherry right you know so <laughs> you know coming to carry me home so that lets you know that <laughs> we haven't really been that too far removed from having this particular knowledge that our salvation is, our salvation is going to come from the heavens all right so what what between that time with us uh singing sweet, uh, swing low sweet chariot up until now changed well esau with his damn fighter jets and blue angels all these things has been just shown unto us and now our people is leaning upon the horses and chariots of egypt yeah. and totally forgot about the salvation of the lord man yeah. right i did the 31st chapter it says um as birds flying, the Lord's yeah. going to deliver Jerusalem, man. Yeah. You see, but you read uh, the first verse in that chapter. It speaks about how our people is leaning upon the chariots of Egypt, man. Yeah. Not even looking towards the, uh, the, uh, the birds of your house, if you will, man. Right, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's an important, we got to reiterate this point, because like, as the priests have been saying, this understanding is a part of our heritage. It's a part of our history, All right? The same way Esau, right, got particular pieces of history that he remembers, like fucking, uh, you know, uh, Paul Revere, the damn, the British are coming. Yeah. Right? You got this, all that shit. The, Alamo, the Alamo, all these whack ass, you know, historical events. Right? A part of our history, a part of our heritage is what we're reading about right now. You know, and that's truly why, you know, Esau is shaking in his boots while he's scared. Because he knows, you know, even though we're here, right, in this uh, low, decrepit state, right, in the, in the spirit, right, in the heavens. All right, as uh, I forget what that was, was that Alicia that said that? There'll be more with us and there are with them? Yep. Roughly uh, paraphrasing. Uh, All right, Esau knows that. You know, you got a precept to buy. Nahum chapter 1, verse 5 The mountains quake in him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned in his presence. Yeah, the world and all that dwell therein. You want to speak on it? Uh, uh, well, you got it, bro, but I'm just laying back and I'll read it again. Nahum 1 and 5. Because when you, when you started Nahum 1 and 2, it talks about how pissed off the Most High is. Okay, let's start there. Nahum 1 and 2, the Most High is jealous and the Lord revenge it. Right, yeah. the Lord. Oh, you got it. 
Uh, the Lord has that godly jealousy over his woman, which is the nation of Israel. All right, just like the brother Oz Wall said earlier, we got him on one stick, according to prophecy. You got Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom being joined back on one stick. All these tribes that are on this board, man. All right, that fit the curses. All right, this is who the Lord, uh, who his people are. And he's jealous over them. Yeah. All right, and what happened unto them, which was a punishment. But, all right, it's, it's, it's two sides to that coin. Esau got to pay. Yeah, that's right. And you the scriptures, it. if I may, and you got, and I'll get right back to you. The scriptures liken it under jealousy for a reason. Yeah. You know, case in point, think about it. You just broke up with your, with your ex-girl. Right, you go, you go to the bar, you go to the club, and you see your girl caked up, mm -hmm. right, with some dude that you went to school with. <laughs> enemy, right, yeah. you gonna be hot or the enemy. No. All right, it's gonna be a fiery uh, uh, jealousy that you got. You know, so just imagine, right, the, the Lord, because we know the script. What does the scripture say? The scripture say, uh, "My my thoughts are higher than your thoughts." Yeah. Right, yeah. all the emotions that we experience here in this uh, in this flesh. Yeah, how about Shimei Al Shai? It, it's you know he's experiencing these things on an infinite level, man. We can't even imagine, we can't even fathom, you know, the, really the thoughts, you know, but he's given us a basic understanding. Continuing on in Nahum 1 and 2, it says, The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, yeah. and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Yeah, yeah so the Lord is going to take revenge. All right, all the atrocities that was done. All right, so, y'all watch my shop right now. All the atrocities, all the all the rough ways the Israelites had to go through, that Esau Edom put us through first and foremost, it's gonna be double upon your head. That's written all throughout the scriptures, man. That's why they wanna silence this truth. Because once this truth go out, the end can come. What entails the end? Jacob's world beginning. What's gonna happen in Jacob's world? The same thing that's happening here. All right, Esau is in his in his uh lofty high place in the heavens, all right, and we're in captivity. All right, his kingdom, his heaven is our hell. So in our kingdom, our heaven is going to be his hell. All right, you got it. And, and the Lord is going to use the Israelite man to do it. All right, even these wicked ass jakes that's out here, when they come back through the seed of the elect, you're going to be looking, you're going to be seeing them put hell on these heathens, man. You got it. Verse three, the Lord is slow to anger. He's slow to anger, right? Because Lord on a different time frame. The scriptures say the plagues are not slack. All right. A day to him is a thousand years. All right, what does that mean? Think about that. All right, so the Lord, we down here in these fleshly bodies, we want to do stuff now, 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 but the Lord has everything in his time, and they're surely coming to pass. All right, but he is slow. He's slow to that to that wrath. He's he's enduring with, with uh, long suffering, the vessels fitted to wrath, which is Esau Edom, man. You got it. And great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Right. All right, the, the scripture says that the the sinner shall not escape with his spoils. And the uh, the the faith, basically, it says the faith of the the devout people, the godly, will not be frustrated. All right, because this is the faith and the patience of the saints. All right, that's out here proclaiming Yahweh Bashem Al Shah. That's why these things are happening in the earth. All right, so that the end can come. We tired of this place, man. Every brother tired of this shit. They opened up CERN. Brother, start going through more hell. <laughs> you know, so we ready to get the fuck out of here, man. And if you're not down with it, that's according to prophecy too. <clears throat> See, it ain't it ain't no way you can negate. You know, you can you can come back this truth really. The scripture says it's gonna be scoffers. The scripture say all these things are gonna happen. And the scripture also mentions the wrath that the heavenly Father, all right, was, was uh, so long enduring to show was show after this word would come out, and now it's out. So now this wrath is coming upon the earth. The scriptures say, all right. When the uh the angels they'll start to let go they'll let go of those four winds which is symbolic for the destruction when this word has gone out to the elect and sealed them in their mind this word has been out man why we we see all this going down with israel all right with, with uh iran russia russia boasting against the west they got the satan too this and that we can we can wipe america off in 30 minutes an hour Why you think things are happening, bro? The scripture says, measure the time diligently. You go through, you read the prophecies, and you're like, damn, we right here. You got it? The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Right, all right, the Lord is having his way. The scripture say, uh, my counsel shall, shall stand 
and I will do all my pleasure. What is the Lord's pleasure? Yahweh Shah Hamashiach said, Fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What's that? That's the end of Esau's world. We not gonna be co-dwelling on earth with this nigga. Yeah. This nigga gonna be in chains. That's right. Is there more? Uh, Jumping uh, down to verse five, that mountains quake at him, quake. Like we, where, where we've been going into. Yeah. All right, when Yahweh sends Yahweh Shah, which he said, I'm coming in my father's glory with Michael, with the angels. When the Lord comes back, all those chairs, what you think gonna happen? You can read it again. Hey, read, re read the, the bottom half of that uh, previous verse. Okay. It says, the Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Right, now read the beginning of that next verse. It says, the mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Right, so that's that whirlwind. What is that? What the sermon was just going into. That was going into the chair, so Yahweh Basham Shah. So when Yahweh Basham Shah and the angels come in to this realm, well, like, like uh, the priest mentioned earlier about uh, Habakkuk the third chapter, the seas are gonna quake, the earth is gonna quake. All right, the Lord say uh, the idols are moved at His presence, man. Yeah. All right, hey, <laughs> the foundation of the of the whole world is gonna shake at, at that upper realm coming into this lower realm, man. Yeah. Got it. Furthermore, going into uh, that whirlwind, all right, uh, being them chariots. The, the scripture says in Job that the Lord answered him out of the whirlwind, mm -hmm. you know, just to make that point. You got it? Yeah, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Right. You got it? And who can abide in the fierceness of his of his anger? Right. So, oh, you got I was going to say that's a rhetorical question, right? Because the answer is nobody, right? Yeah. These these people bug out, right? Just when you have, you know, uh, uh, these natural disasters, right? Even when the Lord, you know, allows the, uh, the the planet Earth to do its thing, these people lose their mind, right? Imagine when not only is it the planet Earth, you got various natural disasters happen happening simultaneously. Not only that, but then on top of that, you got the chariots, all right, doing damage. Yeah. All right, it's gonna be like nothing you ever seen. Nobody's gonna be able to withstand. Nobody's gonna be able to stand. Yeah. Only those who uh, Yahweh Bashim Shai sets up. Even the wicked elites are gonna flee. Right. The scripture says how they're gonna go into their satellites because they can't leave Earth. You, they even said you can't go past the Van Allen's belt. Oh. All right, it's an enclosed. The Lord trapped this this fugitive, this vagabond man. He trapped him, man. Yeah. Call all your help, hush your mouth, shop. All right, he's not gonna allow him to just flee off and planet hop for eternity and set up the ghettos, you know. But anyway, that's why they were trying to uh, put that server. Yeah. You know? They trying to they trying to find that God particle to figure out how the creation how everything works so that they can rewrite it they can escape somehow, but it's written that you're not gonna escape you can't uh, disannul the prophet uh, the prophecies man yeah. because because if you suppose okay you landed on the moon in the 60s the 60s bro <laughs> before digital shit everything was analog yeah it's, it's right easy to lie about that probably a woman driving. <laughs> everything and everything analog you but you managed to land on the moon right yeah. but now but basically uh you know there's nothing there's nothing else to do or you know i think they said they just started back doing it again yeah 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 just like yeah recently. you know what i'm saying yeah. but they they knew that if they kept doing the you know the moon shit then people would figure out like okay this some bs <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it, you know, like, if you still believe, man, and he saw, bro, it's like, these people don't, I wonder how many people really still believe that he saw land on the moon, for real. It's really few now. Baby You know, boom. because uh, so many people waking up to this bullshit. Baby boomers. Every, every hand in the wicked is coming from them. Right. So it's like, okay, if you, if you find out the truth about Esau not landing on the moon, <laughs> wouldn't that make you question all the other stuff that he's lying about that he's hidden that he's hidden he went out of his way to go on live television there's still people to this day that remember that day when they stopped everything and they like hey hold on it was apollo uh whatever 11 or 13, uh -huh. whatever went to the moon we good who was that what's your boy uh neil armstrong or some shit like that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> neil armstrong that's one step for man, one one giant leap for mankind. Look at that. If you still believe that shit, man, you simple, man. You're supposed to say the simple believe in every word. 
So, man. so yeah, Esau can't escape. He wish he could. If he could escape, man, that's the question. He would have. See, we'd have uh, uh, the the Burj Khalifa on the moon. Mm -hmm. We'd have. We'd be able to zoom in on a telescope. <laughs> I got, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, cities on the moon. Why, why we ain't got no cities on the moon? Right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. 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 Nigga woman. Yeah. Taking Instagram yeah. pictures yeah. of from the moon. So Esau can't go to the, he can't get past, he can't get, he can go up past some clouds and that's it. And he figured out he couldn't get past the, uh, the uh, you know, the cloud, or past the, um, the Earth's atmosphere. Right. To us, past a certain point, when he, you know, that missile, we was, that's why he was testing the missiles. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yep. in the 50s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was shooting the missiles up there, yeah. that nuclear weapon, to see if he could blow up the, uh, the firmament. <laughs> the stuff. Blow up the firmament yeah. <laughs> so he could get past it, man. Yeah. yeah. So he saw the devil, man. That's why we call you the devil. You got it, bro. And yeah. if I may add, too, you know, that's why you know, he says that if he could search out the heavens or the sea, then the Lord would cast off his people. So you know, this has been a dual thing that he's been trying to do to escape, but to see if there's any way out of his judgment, or if the Lord would 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 would, would uh, uh, what do you call when you uh, uh, acquit him, you know what I mean, of what's to come, you know. So yeah, but like you said, at the end of the day, man, he's trapped, man. You know that's why the Lord said in Genesis, man, lay, lay no hand on him, man, because he's got something special for him. You know, he's credited the wicked for the damn evils. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, that's what I can add. I mean, let's yes, let's but uh. I remember okay. Elder Yashwan, but he had made the <laughs> made the beautiful point. Like he saw, he got these crystal clear pictures of the moon and Mars, but yet you know you have a nigga robbed the Seven Eleven. They have that fuzzy pixel, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, have you seen this guy? You know, it's, uh, you know, it's got got a sketch. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. sketch. <laughs> all the pixels and shit in the camera, but yet you got the crystal clear picture of the moon. Yeah. You know, so all that shit, man. Hey. But it just goes to show that the people are still wondering after the image of the beast. They're, they're right. wondering uh, in amazement. Right. You know, yeah. they're right. awestricken after this man. And that's right. what's going to lead them to get that MOTV. Because right. they literally yeah. view this man as the most high. Yeah. They may not say it, but their actions and the way they live their life and the narrative that they believe through Esau, right. that's them believing that this man is the most high, man. Yeah. We'll read that real quick. Amos 9. God, this is Amos chapter 9 and verse 2. It says. Though they dig into hell, then shall my head take take them. Right. Though they dig into hell, right. And as the scriptures, the scriptures been quoted, right. The scriptures talk about that, about uh, you know Esau building his underground cities, his uh, his bunkers, all right, trying to hide from the presence of the Lord. All right. That's not gonna work. All right. There's no escaping, buddy. You got it, bro. God, continue, continue, continue on. It says, though they climb up to heaven. Then will I bring them down? Can you read that last part? God. It says, uh, it says, though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down? Right. Though you climb up to heaven, right? You got your, uh, got your satellites, right? Got these, uh, you know, your little satellites, various things that you got up in the heavens, right? None of that shit is gonna work, right? None of that is gonna help you, you know. But the Lord got you so proud. That you think that you're even, you think you're gonna be able to uh, uh, fight the Most High, all right? Go to war with the Most High, all right? But we'll see. Hey, it, it makes sense because I seen a post today. It was a spirit that we talking about this. I seen a post today and it was like a, it was uh, that, that that woman, uh, Aaliyah, the singer, all right? Oh. Mm. And uh, that passed on. It was her like this. She was in a picture like this, and it was like, think about it. If they got, if they making and they got bunkers. All right, that tells you that they can't leave because <laughs> they got bunkers, man. They got to go. They got to stay here, you know, so they got to stay here, man. If they if they could leave, they wouldn't have bunkers. They'll just be like, we're just going to we're going to slide, you know, so that that's them telling on themselves, you know, and also their bodies aren't really capable. It's not made to be going up there. You see them when they come out, them satellites, they go up there, they'll come back down after a while or whatever. They'd be all fucked up. They'd be on. T they'd be somebody be holding them up. They'd be uh pass out. They gotta go through a uh, rehab on that, you know. So they're not made for that, man. The Lord didn't make these bodies, these these bodies down here, all right, to where they can just go and do do all that. No, 
You know, it, it's working against you, man. You got anything else? Yeah, I got one. Isaiah chapter 66 in verse 15. For behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. All right, like that whirlwind that we were speaking about earlier. All right, but what are these chariots going to do? All right, we spoke about them. We see them now and stuff, but what are they ultimately going to do? It says, and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. That, that's how you know they're going to be shooting out those what you call laser beams, concentrated heat, all right? That's what the chariots of the Heavenly Father are going to be doing. Yahweh Shah is going to do that too with his chariot, yeah. you know? Yeah. But that's what's going to be going down when they come back, all right? Yahweh Shah said, I will not meet thee as a man. Yahweh Shah, he came the first time and laid down his life, but this second time, there's going to be a whole new vibration, bro, all right? And we that's why we out here preparing and telling our people to prepare, but for you Edomites, for you heathens, this is what's coming. This is the curse that's going to fly over the whole earth, man. Done. The brother didn't have anything. We'll go ahead and close on on that. Lord's willing, this camp was that edifying. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles that taught us this truth. And uh, shalom to the next lesson. Shalom. 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 The next camp. All right. <laughs>